Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted in the hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad that this group will continue to rise forth with small, with small cults, with small reoccurrences until the day of judgment. So it is true that classical Kharijism, this group that came in the time of Ali, that group by and large dwindled away and one small subsect that is pacifist and toned down remains. But others of that ilk, others of that fanaticism will continue to rise until the day of judgment. And this is exactly what we see, my dear brothers and sisters, in light of the current circumstance, in light of these groups that are in Iraq and in Sham, in light of the beheading of the American journalists, and also the beheading and the death of hundreds and thousands of those who oppose these groups, Sunni and Shia, Muslim and non-Muslim, men, women and children, they have all been butchered in the most radical and the most crude manners by these people who are claiming to want the Sharia, claiming to want the Khilafah, claiming to want the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet exactly as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, their speech is flowery, but their actions have nothing to do with me. Exactly as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, they, their actions demonstrate they leave this religion like an arrow leaves its prey. And subhanallah, we are currently facing two extreme trends in our ummah. The first extreme trend is perhaps more predominant here in these lands, and that is a lackadaisical attitude, not caring about the Sharia, not wanting to follow Islam. That is one extreme. And I have spoken about this and lack of spirituality in so many khutbas. In today's khutbah, I'm speaking about the other extremism, and that is fanaticism, overzealousness, taking a misunderstanding of the religion, and then thinking that you are the holiest person alive. This is the other extremism, and that is the extremism of Kharijism. And the fact of the matter is, listen to what I have to say here, each of these extremisms feeds off the other. I repeat, each of these extremisms feeds off the other. Many non-practicing Muslims will tell you, oh, look at those fanatics, that's why I don't want to get too religious. Look at what happens when you have too much religion. You go berserk, you go crazy. And the Kharijite mentality or the extremists, they say, look at these lackadaisical Muslims doing nothing to help the problems in Palestine, the problems in Iraq, the problems here and there. They're just living their lives selfish, selfishly, completely absorbed in the dunya, not caring about the ummah. They need to be roused up. So each one of them feeds off the other. Each one of them needs the other to exist. The fact of the matter, my dear brothers and sisters, when you look at these fanatical extremist groups, you find the same symptoms that our Prophet predicted in the Kharijis of old. These are modern manifestations of those groups. You find amongst them that they have this perverted understanding of the Sharia. Everybody wants to follow the Sharia that's a good Muslim. All of us want to follow the Sharia. But their version of Sharia is so bizarre. It is so perverted. They seem to be calling to it. But what they do has nothing to do with the Sharia. And by the way, the bulk of them, if not all of them, are totally ignorant of what the Sharia is. Just like the Kharijites when they have this very uh, superficial understanding of the Quran. They take one verse and, the, and khalas, that's it. That's not the way Islam works. Study the religion, become a scholar. Ibn Abbas debated them, he answered every one of their points. We also see in these groups that just like the Kharijites of old, anybody who opposes them, automatically he becomes a kafir. You cannot have disagreement with these people. And wallahi, I and every single da'i and caller to Islam who has criticized them. Look at our Twitter accounts that respond back to us and Facebook comments from the supporters of this group. You kafir, you sell out, you American dog, you this, you that. There can be no disagreement. Instantly, you become a non-Muslim. And I have gotten death threats myself, and I know others who have criticized them have gotten death threats online from these fanatics. Subhanallah, we are only saying don't kill innocent people even if you disagree with this does that mean you're going to now call us kafir and munafiq but this is the mentality of kharijites that there is it's black and white the world you're either with us or you're against us and this is not the mentality of a muslim with a different opinion ya akhi our religion has differences of opinion in it suppose i disagree with one act doesn't make me a non-muslim even if you disagree with my interpretation doesn't make that to be a non-muslim and yet this is 
is exactly what we find. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, of the characteristics of the Khadijites of old is this bloodthirstiness that you want to just kill, kill, kill. Killing becomes a goal in and of itself. And blood becomes cheap. And this is not the methodology of our religion. What did our Prophet ﷺ even say to the first of those Khadijites, the one that said to him, I'dil ya Muhammad, he said, don't kill him, let him be, let him be. Let not the people say that I kill my own followers. He allowed this extremist to go free because he knew others would come. Even if I kill one, so what, another will come. Bloodshed and terror and violence is not going to solve problems. It will create more bloodshed and more terror and more violence. Also, these groups say, how come you only criticize us and you don't criticize the foreign powers? You don't criticize America, you don't criticize Israel. Wallahi, this is totally false. How many times have all of us criticized foreign policies, the Iraq invasion, the Afghanistan invasion, Guantanamo, on this mimbar, I have criticized and all of us have criticized. But we concentrate on these fanatics for many reasons. First and foremost, what a nation and a country does, we don't expect them to follow Islam when they don't believe in Islam. A nation, our own nation, we all know, political analysts say, it's not a religious point, that they're more interested in oil. This is one of the main reasons of all of these conflicts. The false invasion is because of greed, it's because of money. The pretext of going in was not because of religion, it's because they want global power. This is the reality. So we don't expect them to act morally. However, people who are Muslim, we expect them to have a higher standard. People who claim to follow the Quran and Sunnah, it is our duty to correct them even more. Also, when Israel bombs the Palestinians and whatever is happening there, they're not doing it in the name of Allah, in the name of the religion. But when these groups kill those who oppose them, they say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then they kill the person. No doubt, we have more of a right to correct those who kill in the name of Islam than those who kill in the name of power and greed. Yes, wallahi, we are not naive. And I say this as explicitly as possible. It is because of the false invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan. It is because of the foreign policy that this country and others have generated. That the circumstances have been created to allow ISIS and Al-Qaeda to come forth. We didn't have ISIS 20 years ago. We didn't have Al-Qaeda with its threats and whatnot 15-30 years ago. No doubt, this is undeniable reality. And this is not a religious person speaking. This is simple political analysis. Go read any genuine political analysts talking about the circumstances that are needed to create extremism. When these people have seen so much bloodshed, so much lies, when they have been bombed and killed themselves, what happens is the mentality then amongst the overzealous fanatics is we will do the same unto you what you have done unto us. Yes, we are not naive to this, but we tell these young brothers, and they're all young brothers by and large, they are young 20s and whatnot, you don't find amongst them senior leaders in the 60s and 70s, you don't find seasoned ulama, you don't find people that have world experience amongst them. They're all a bunch of young rebels with naive utopic notions of establishing a global caliphate. We tell these brothers, read the Quran and Sunnah, read history, find out the classical Kharajites of old and see what their problems were. Brothers and sisters, the damage that these groups are doing to Islam, Israel is not damaging Islam's reputation. Israel is massacring Muslims, that is true. But the reputation of Islam is not being affected by Israel. America is killing uh, with its foreign policy so many people, but it's not damaging the perception of Islam. Isn't that the case? But what these people are doing is damaging the religion of Islam. Just a few days ago on Fox News, and we don't expect much better from Fox News, one of the people there commented, all Muslims should be shot after the American journalist was beheaded. Why are we adding more fuel? This is not of our religion. An innocent civilian, an innocent journalist should not be executed and then in a gruesome manner and then displaying the video and whatnot. This is not just an Islamic, it is foolish. And what is going to happen with this hate except more hate being generated? My dear brothers and sisters, for all of these reasons, we have to always be critical of these extremisms, even as we are critical of foreign policy, of Guantanamo, of Iraq, of Afghanistan, of Israel. We always are critical of any oppression and we stand with the oppressed against the oppressor. But there is no doubt when the Muslim oppresses in the name of Islam, 
which is what is happening now. Then our ghira, our honor, our jealousy for Islam, our, uh, our reason to criticize becomes much more. Not in our name. You're not allowed to kill people in the name of Allah, in the name of the Sharia, in this brutal manner. Innocent people. How many thousands have been killed, my dear brothers and sisters? And wallahi, we need to be as vocal as possible for the sake of our religion, for the sake of the... Uh, of the uh, uh, of the perception, not just amongst non-Muslims, wallahi, even non-practicing Muslims. And this is perhaps the saddest thing, that there are many amongst us who think, I don't want to become too religious, I don't want to become like those people. Subhanallah, my dear brothers and sisters, what these people are doing is not religion. Religion, religiosity, Islam, Iman, the more you have, the better it is for you. Do not misunderstand false religiosity with genuine religiosity. Religion will never harm you. Quran is never going to hurt you. Following the Prophet is always beneficial. These people do not represent our religion. Our Prophet was the most religious man. And yet he was a mercy to the world. He was the most religious man. And yet he was a mercy to the world. My dear brothers and sisters, don't fall for the trap of this binary, this two situation scenario. Wallahi, religion is nothing but good. But it has to be good religion. Religion is nothing but good if it is done properly. Genuine love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Following the Quran according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The more you have, the better it is. Let not the hatred of one group cause you to go astray. Be fair and just. The middle path and good religiosity. This is what we want. My dear brothers and sisters, much more can be said. Time is of the essence here. Subhanallah, fanaticism. Fanaticism is never going to be helpful. Our Prophet ﷺ never reacted emotionally because of something that happened to him. Wallahi, all of us are angry at the political climate in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Iraq. All of us are angry at the bombing of innocent uh, 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 Palestinian civilians. All of us are angry at our own foreign policy. All of us. But we don't react in haste. We don't react in blind rage. We don't react mere emotion. Our Prophet was tortured uh, and the Sahaba were tortured more than what is happening now. But they never once did a foolish act. They never once did something that would cause more harm to them. And that is the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And in it is our life. And in it is our ultimate success in this world and the next. My dear brothers and sisters, be careful of these groups and the opposites. Be careful of those who mock Islam amongst the Muslims, who mock religiosity. And be careful as well of those who have gone to extreme fanaticism, the middle path is always the best path, and that is the path of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always make us upon that path.